Hi everyone, it's Nick with Bright Ideas Agency here. This video is just going to be a couple of pointers on how to deal with uh, related tables when using Dataverse and Power Automate. I've been deep in a project this week um, where I have been working with some of this stuff and reminding myself of um, how to, to do some of these things. Um, and there's a couple of idiosyncrasies that I thought it would be useful just to make a quick video on with some tips on how you can work with uh, related tables and lookup columns when you are doing Dataverse actions in Power Automate. So enjoy. Okay, so I've just jumped into one of my dev environment accounts here that has a uh, Dataverse database available. And inside a new solution, I've just set up a couple of really straightforward tables just to demonstrate interacting with Dataverse. So I've got one employee table, which has got the name of employee, their role, and then a lookup to a location table. And then my location table has a bunch of other information, the name of the location, the city, the country, and the capacity. So if I jump over to Power Automate, um, I can just create a really simple flow here just with a list rows. I'm limiting this list rows to one row back um, and I'm looking at the employees table. And let's just take a look at what we get out. So for ease of reading, I've pasted this response back over to VS Code. Um, and you can see you get a very standard response that you will be familiar with if you've done any work with Dataverse or SharePoint or anything else. But you can see we get a lot more information back um, than what we showed you in that table to begin with. And really, there are two types of information that we're getting back. We're getting back um, these columns, which are the ones that we have created in the table. So, for example, the name, the role. And then we're getting these columns with underscores. And these are the related tables. So for example, for my location table, I have um, a value here, which is the GUID of the related location. And that's all the information that I've got back here. So in many circumstances, you're going to want to grab information related to the table that you're querying. So one approach that you might take now that you've got your rows out of Dataverse for your employees is to come back in here and create another action. We can have a Dataverse action and that can be get row by ID. And we're going to choose our location table. And then the ID, because we've already grabbed this information from um, from the employees table, we can actually use this location value. Um, and this puts it in an apply to each because always that value is a, um, an array that we're getting back from the list rows. So even though we've just limited this to one row right now, this could be 5,000 rows. So um, Power Automate helpfully puts this in an apply to each. Um, and so what we're going to do here is just exactly the same. I'm going to put a, uh, a compose action in here. And I'm just going to grab the output from uh, my get a row by ID. And here we go. I've pasted this response back into Visual Studio Code again so that we can take a look at it and you can see we've got the city, the name, the country, etc. there. But this is actually a very inefficient way of laying this out because you get a lot more steps in Power Automate than you actually need um, and you're taking a lot more actions on the Dataverse database than you need. So what we're going to do is come back over to our original output and we're going to look through this with this location. And what we want to find is this associated navigation property for the location, the table name. Um, and you want the navigation property one because the uh, case does actually make a difference. So we're going to copy this. Now jumping back over to Power Automate. Let's edit this. We're going to get rid of this step here. And we're going to come into our list rows. 
And what we're going to do here is we're going to use this expand query option. And we're just going to dump that table name into expand query. And what this is going to do is it's going to grab the data related to the row that I'm getting back from the related table. So let's just run this. So here we are back in VS Code and we've got the response to that last query to the Dataverse database. And we can see up here at the top we've got basically the same information that we had on our first query. But if we keep scrolling down, you can see that we now have uh, an object which is the location table and all of the information from the location table has been brought over into our query, our list rows query um, for the employee table. So this is a really useful way of getting all the information that you may need um, without doing two actions in Power Automate. However, you might be in a situation where all that you need is actually, say, the country. So let's copy the name of that country field. And back in Power Automate, we're going to edit this again. We're going to come down here to our expand query and we're going to add some brackets here. And then we're going to say select equals and we're going to put the name of the field that we want there. So now jumping back over to VS Code again, we've got our output from our query. And if we scroll down, you can see that I still have this object for location here, but the only data that I'm getting back, there's a couple of extra things here, but the, the main column that I'm getting back is country. So it's possible to tailor your, uh, your query in such a way that you're just getting back the related data that you want. So you might also be interested in how do lookups impact adding new data into your database. So um, I've got uh, add new row here in Power Automate and I'm just going to add an employee. This employee is going to be called Nick. And then I'm going to put a location in here and I want the location to be uh, my headquarters. I know that's one of the options that I've got in my location table. And you can see I've ended up with an error. It has not managed to add in that uh, table for me, that row for me. Um, and that's because of this related table. So how do you add in a related table? item. You, you can see there isn't a drop down list here. So if we jump back over to VS Code, we're going to take a look at the edit link that we have for our location. You can see the location here is the one with the United Kingdom um, uh, location. But we have an edit link here of the table and then the GUID of the item. So we're just going to copy this, jump back over to Power Automate, and we're going to put a slash, and then we're going to put in that um, edit link that we just grabbed. And let's save this, test it. And here we go, our flow has run successfully, and we've added our item into our Dataverse database. So when you're dealing with adding in rows that include those lookups, you need to make sure that you know the table that that uh, is related to and the GUID of the item that you are looking to add in. And then that gives you all the information you need to be successful with dealing with adding lookups into your um, Dataverse using Power Automate. So hopefully this has given you a couple of pointers on some things that may be a little bit confusing when it comes to using Dataverse with Power Automate. Um, if this has been useful to you, then please do give the video a like um, and do subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. Until next time, bye bye.